Hi guys, I'm Rob from Projector Central and this is our video review of the Epson LS800 Ultra Short Throw Laser TV Projector. Epson's LS800 is basically an update to its first laser TV, the LS500, and it's a significant revision. Unlike the LS500, which was adapted from a chassis designed for Epson's classroom projectors, the LS800 was built from the ground up for consumers. Epson kept the LS500's industry-leading 4000 lumen brightness and still offers the projector in either black or white to match your decor. But the LS500's boxy, unadorned shape has given way to an attractive, low-profile industrial design. More important, the LS500's big periscope lens with its 0.29 to 1 throw ratio has disappeared and it's been replaced with a recessed 0.16 to 1 lens. That's the shortest throw in the industry. This means you can place the projector closer to the wall than any laser TV on the market. The LS800 requires only 3.9 inches clearance to the screen wall for a 100 inch image, or just 17.3 inches of total depth. It also projects images up to 150 inches, with its front panel sitting less than 25 inches from the screen. Furthermore, the LS800's Yamaha design sound system is a big step up from the LS500's throwaway utility speakers. If you take off the front grille, you'll find a modest but respectable audio system with decent mid-range performance from a pair of 1.5-inch full-range inverted dome drivers and a 2.5-inch base unit in a ported enclosure. What it lacks is the last word in high-end detail and both base extension and dynamics. After surveying the sound of 14 projectors last summer for our UST shootout, I'd rank this one near the top of the middle tier of all USTs out there. It won't offend you, but it won't wow you either. That said, if you do plan to add an outboard audio system, the LS800 offers an HDMI ARC connection, but note that it's not the most current enhanced eARC version that passes Dolby Atmos bitstreams. What the LS800 does offer is an integrated Android TV 11 streaming platform, which is preferred to the old LS500 and some other products that come with a supplied Android dongle. But like a lot of Android projectors, there's no certified Netflix app, and I saw some quirky behavior with how the Android platform handles HDR with some services. So you're probably better off adding a Roku, Fire Stick, or Apple TV via one of the HDMI ports. Speaking of connections, the input ports are around the side hidden behind a spring-loaded panel along with the manual focus lever. They include three HDMI ports, one of which is a dedicated gaming port that can be accessed directly with a button on the remote. Selecting this input bypasses the Android operating system to reduce input lag to around 20 milliseconds, which makes this one of the most impressive gaming USTs on the market. The supplied remote control is a compact, non-backlit affair that's pretty simple to use, though not without its quirks. Along with the gaming button, there are dedicated buttons for selecting the input or accessing Google Assistant, your app library, YouTube music, and the Android home screen. Along with the usual volume rocker, there's a really helpful brightness control that lets you adjust the laser power on the fly. What's confusing about it, though, is that there are two menu buttons like we see on a lot of Android projectors. One to access the Android system settings and another to get into a whole different menu for the projector settings. That's confusing to start with and it gets even worse if you select the game input which as I mentioned bypasses the Android operating system to reduce input lag. At that point the projector won't respond to either menu button until you return to the home screen. That means you can't adjust image quality in real time for your game console plugged into that HDMI 3 input. Beneath the hood, the LS800 uses some familiar Epson tech. There's a trio of LCD chips, one each for the red, green, and blue primaries. As Epson often reminds us, this delivers equal white and color brightness and makes the projector immune to the rainbow artifacts you can get with some single-chip DLP projectors. The LS800 also uses the same 4K Pro UHD technology Epson has used for years in its home theater projectors. It uses pixel shifting to double the resolution of the native 1080p imaging chips, which is unfortunately only half the pixel count of a full 4K projector. Now, Thanks to image processing, it looks acceptably sharp from normal viewing distance, especially with good 4K content. But it's a bit less sharp than I've seen on full 4K models, or even some of Epson's other projectors that use the same method. And if you move too close to the screen, you can start to see pixel structure pretty quickly. 
Now the LS800's projector menu also has different picture settings than we've seen on most Epson home theater projectors. It's an effective grouping of controls for the projector's intended purpose and audience of everyday viewers, but it lacks the gain and bias controls that pro calibrators and enthusiasts need to fine tune the white balance. There's also no color management system that the pros look for to adjust the color points and gamut. But there are some things we're not used to seeing in there, including an exceptionally wide-ranging color temp control in lieu of gain and bias settings and several auto contrast settings that optimize contrast for this very bright projector. These include Epson's Scene Adaptive Gamma Control, which is designed to pull subtle shadow detail from dark content. Epson's 16-step slider for HDR brightness is also on board. Meanwhile, the picture mode selection is pretty basic and includes four options. Dynamic, Vivid, Cinema, and Natural. Dynamic has a heavy green cast. But Vivid, with some adjustments, looked reasonably accurate and still provided good brightness for viewing in high ambient light. Cinema was my easy choice for darkroom viewing and both SDR and HDR content, thanks to its punchy and largely accurate colors. Epson also provides a couple of interesting setup options, including a menu to adjust the color balance if you choose to project on a painted wall, which we don't recommend. There's also geometric correction to speed the image alignment, which we also don't recommend using if you want to preserve the best image quality. But if you do choose to go that route, you can align the projector quickly with an app that lets you snap the image into place by taking a couple of pictures with your smartphone. Now before I talk about the LS800's performance, I have to thank Elite Screens for supplying the screens for our video studio, and especially the screen I'm using for this review. It's the Sacred Tab Tension Dark UST Motorized Screen from Elite's Pro AV line, and it's one of the only 120-inch motorized lenticular ALR UST screens. This tab tension screen uses Elite's top-grade lenticular material, which rejects 95% of overhead light and boosts contrast 100 times versus a standard matte white screen. Like other lenticular screens, it also benefits from a wide 180 degree viewing angle that lets everyone in the room enjoy the same image quality. I'll put a link down below to my video review of this screen that provides more detail and shows the installation process. You can also learn more about this and the fixed frame Aon CLR version at Elite's website. So the LS800 is an interesting projector from an image quality perspective. At 4000 honest lumens in its brightest mode, it's currently the brightest laser TV on the market. High brightness like that typically comes with compromises in black level and contrast or color gamut. It also makes it more challenging to achieve an accurate D65 neutral gray-white balance at anything close to the projector's full brightness. Now the lack of full color calibration controls kind of tells you where Epson is targeting this projector and the compromises they were willing to make. But I'm still impressed at how thoughtfully they approached this need for brightness while still respecting the spirit of delivering an accurate picture. Let's start out with bright room viewing, which is the most demanding environment you can put a projector in and where pinpoint color accuracy and black level counts for less than sheer firepower. This is the LS800's reason for being, and it was a total champ. The way it battled the overhead lights in our studio in the vivid mode was truly impressive, especially with typical day-to-day -day video content like news and sports, but also with 24-frame movies and TV content. I've honestly never seen a projector hold up so well to this torture test. Now if you're not watching in such harsh conditions, you'll get an even better image with deeper blacks. But if you do watch in bright light, you should know that the LS800 generates some fan noise when it gets pushed. It's pretty quiet if you can keep the laser power below the two-thirds mark, but noise gets much more noticeable if you need the projector's full power to fight high ambient light. You can read more details about this in our review at projectorcentral.com. Switching over to darkroom viewing gave the Epson another chance to shine. My preferred picture mode for both SDR and HDR was the cinema mode. It showed a few small inaccuracies, but skin tones looked natural, and there was nothing that would have stood out as wrong if you weren't intimately familiar with the content. 4K HDR looked even better than 1080p SDR, with sharper images and more immediacy and punch. One thing I noticed, though, is that the 16-step HDR brightness control really didn't offer much usable range versus when I've seen it appear on some other Epson projectors. In the LS800, you'll probably keep it mostly parked one or two clicks off the brightest setting. Now, HDR colors looked well saturated, if a little bit limited on the deepest reds. Still, even though the LS800 is only spec for Rec. 709 gamut, I measured 137% Rec. 709 and 93% DSI P3, 
which is pretty impressive for a single laser projector. Overall, the darkroom contrast was also pretty good thanks to the dynamic contrast features, though really challenging dark content came up noticeably gray. As for focus and sharpness, I'm sorry to say that Epson's doubled up 1080p resolution can definitely result in more noticeable pixels and a touch less sharpness on the big screen compared to a full 4K pixel shifter or native 4K projector. That's especially true when you get up to 120 inches diagonal. But it is impressively sharp with good 4K content, and even at its worst with crummy 1080p broadcast, it's acceptable for the day-to-day -day TV watching this projector is intended for. So to wrap things up, here's a quick look at the Epson LS800's pros and cons. On the plus side, we've got that industry-leading 4000 lumen brightness, super close placement to the wall thanks to that 0.16 to 1 lens, exceptionally low input lag for gaming, at least among the UST projectors, very solid image quality for everyday viewing, a sleek low-profile design, the ability to project pictures up to 150 inches, and a 20,000 hour lifespan with no lamps to replace, which is pretty standard for most laser projectors. On the downside, there's definitely some softness compared to full 4K projectors somewhat inaccurate color and no color calibration controls to correct it, limited color gamut compared to the projectors that'll do DCI-P3, fairly loud fan noise at least at the brightest settings, and then there's no eARC to support Dolby Atmos, no 3D support, and no Dolby Vision HDR support which is something that we're starting to see now pop up on a few projectors. Now if there's anything I'd like most to change about the LS800, it's probably the lack of calibration controls that would allow its color to be fully honed in. I'd also like to see what Epson's new lens would do with a full 4K imaging system. But when you consider how well this Epson achieves its goal of functioning like a day-to-day -day TV in bright light and its reasonable $3,500 price, it's harder to fault it. That's why it easily earned our highly recommended award. You can read about the LS800 in more detail in our written review on projectorcentral.com that's linked below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you can be flagged on our upcoming reviews. I'm Rob Sabin from Projector Central and I'll see you next time.